Nearly all the world's greatest religious teachers have been peacemakers, and one of these certainly was the Buddha. Among the teachings of the Eightfold Path was right action, and part of this was to avoid all killing. Tradition says that the following tale was told by Buddha himself to monks whose quarrel had reached the point of violence. Once long ago, there arose a quarrel between two kings. One king was the great Brahmat Datta. His kingdom was large and rich, and his troops were many. The other one was the Dichi. His kingdom was small and poor, and his troops were few. Brahmadatta told his generals, We will march against Dagiti and conquer his kingdom. He will not be able to resist me. When Dagiti heard of his army's advance, he told Deva, his queen, Nothing we can do can prevent. Sorry, nothing we do can prevent Brahma Data from seizing our country. For the sake of our people, it is best to avoid the battle. Let us flee from the kingdom tonight. Diva asked, But where will we go? We will go to Brahma Data's own capital city, Benares. It is large enough to hide in, and he will never search, us, search for us there. So they took their young son. Digavu and fled by night to Benares. There, there they lodged in a poor quarter of the city. King Digiti disguised himself as a wandering holy man and each day begged enough coins and food for them all. Time passed and the prince grew toward manhood. The king Didichi told his wife, Truly it is said, we may forgive those who hurt us, but we never forgive those we hurt. If Brahma Data finds us here, he will surely kill us all. It is best to send our son from the city. Let him go to my parents in the West. There he can learn the arts and sciences proper to his estate. So they send the prince away. Now it happened that the barber from the court of King Didichi was at his time was at this time at work in the court of Brahmadatta. One day the barber caught sight of Didichi in the market <coughs> place, sorry, begging in the guise of a holy man. Hoping for reward, he secretly followed Didichi to his home, then reported. To Brahma Data. Brahma Data sent his men to arrest the family. Dijiti and Deva were brought before him. Where is your son? demanded Brahma Data. Beyond your reach, replied Dijiti. Brahma Data turned to one of his generals. Tie them up and cart them around the city for all to see and scorn. Then take them out to the south gate and execute them by the sword. Allow no one to perform the funeral rites. Their bodies shall be prey to birds and beasts. Now on that very day, <laughs> Prince Digavu came back to Benares to visit his parents. As he passed through the marketplace, he saw soldiers on horse and on foot, and among them a cart. He tied up the cart, his mother and his father, and he was powerless to help them. King Digiti saw the prince as well, wishing to advise his son, yet mindful not to give him away. Digiti called out as if to no one, and these were his words. Be not short-sighted, be not long-sighted. Not by violence is violence ended. Violence is ended by non-violence. As darkness fell, King Didichi and Queen Deva were taken outside the city walls and executed 
by the sword. Their bodies were left on the ground with a dozen soldiers standing guard. Within the city, Prince Zigavu told himself, First, I will perform the funeral rites for my parents. Then I will find a way to avenge them. He brought strong wine from the marketplace out to the guards. They took it gladly and soon lay drunk and asleep. The Gavu pulled, piled up wood, places his parents' bodies on top, then lit the funeral pyre. He pressed his arm, palm, sorry, he pressed his palms together and walked three times around the frame. At that moment, at the royal palace, Rahmadatta was strolling upon his roof terrace, puzzling over the words of King Digiti that had been reported to him. Gazing far south over the city wall, he spied, he spied the fire and the figure circling it. A cold fear gripped his heart. It must be Prince Digavu. The prince, his duty complete, slipped quickly into the forest. For days he stayed there, hiding from Brahmadatta's men while grieving for his parents. At last the danger and the tears had passed, and Digabu entered the city once more. At the royal elephant stables he took work as an apprentice. And so it was one morning that Digabu rose early, sat before the stables and sang to greet the dawn. His voice drifted to the palace and to the balkan of King Brahmadatta, who had also risen early, wakened by a fearful dream. How oh, lovely. I have need of such music to ease my mind. He sent for the singer and Digabu was brought before him. Sing for me said Brahmadatta, not knowing who the young man was. Jigawu sang and the king's heart was gladdened. Then Brahmadatta told him, Stay with me. And Jigawu answered, As you wish, my lord. So Jigawu became the king's attendant. And since the young man's conduct was agreeable and his words pleasing, the king grew even more fond of him bestowing on him more and more responsibility and trust. Then came a day when Brahmadatta desired to go hunting and he told Digabu, Today you will drive my chariot. And Digabu replied, It is an honor, my lord. So Digabu that day drove the chariot of the king. But as the hunters pursued their quarry, Digabu cleverly took a path that led away. He brought the king far from the sight and hearing of the others. At last, Brahmadatta said, I wish to stop and rest. Digavu dismounted and sat cross-legged on the ground, and he told the king, Come rest yourself, my lord. So the king lay down beside Digavu and slept. Digavu gripped his sword and drew it slowly from its sea. He pointed the blade at the throat of Brahmadatta. And then there came to him the words of his father. Be not short-sighted, be not long-sighted. Not by violence is violence ended. Violence is ended by non-violence. The sword of Jigavu trembled. He drew it slowly away and replaced it in its sheath. Brahmadatta breathed heavily and opened wide his eyes and sat up in alarm. What is wrong, my lord? It is a dream that often plagues me. I saw Digavu, the son of my enemies, coming at me with his sword to avenge his parents. Then Digavu rose and again drew his sword. I am Digavu, son of your enemies, and here am I to avenge my parents. Have mercy, dear Digavu, grant me my life. How can I grant your life? 
Huli, is it said, we may forgive those who hurt us, but we never forgive those who hurt. You have killed my mother and my father and would surely kill me too. So the life to be granted is mine. Then grant me my life and I will grant you yours. So Digabu put away his sword. And the king rose and the two clasped their hands and swore never again to seek the other's heart. Then Ramadatta said, I have often pondered your father's final words. Tell me, Digavu, what did you mean? What did he mean when he told you? Be not short-sighted. My father meant, do not be quick to spurn a gift of friendship. And what did he mean when he told you, be not long-sighted? My father meant, do not allow do not allow your hate to last too long. And what did he mean when he told you, not by violence, is violence ended? Violence is ended by non-violence. My father meant this. You, my lord, have killed my parents and stolen their kingdom. If I were to kill you in revenge, your allies would kill me. And then my allies would kill them and so on, with no end to violence. But now, instead, you, you have granted my life and I have granted yours. So violence, violence is at an end. Then the king marveled at the wisdom of the governor, who understood in full what his father had said in brief. Sorry. Indeed, so great was Brahmadada's admiration and his gratitude, he soon restored to Digavu the kingdom of his father. And as long as both kings lived, all quarrels between them were resolved in friendship and goodwill.